story brewing, Barnes, about the band The Killers. Ooh, we lovely. love Brandon Flowers and The Killers, don't we? Yeah, but bro didn't go to world history class. They were booed by a crowd in Georgia, and I'm talking about the country of Georgia, for bringing a Russian fan on stage and calling him brother. Now they're apologizing. Uh, they revealed to the crowd, to the former Soviet state, that he was from the neighboring country, which invaded them in 2008. There is video of this and audio, because, you know, they always bring up somebody to play drums on stage. Um, this did not go too well, because the crowd went crazy. Let's hear a little bit of it, and then I'll talk to you about the apology and what he said on stage. Awkward! This guy's a Russian. Are you okay with a Russian coming out here? just dug the hole deeper and deeper. Yes, if you could hear what he was saying there, you can't recognize if someone's your brother. And then he said, am I not your brother being from America? And then he urged the audience to celebrate that we're here together. And then he said, hey, I don't want it to turn ugly and I see you as my brothers and sisters. Didn't go well. People started leaving after the song. And then they issued this huge statement. Um, it was never our intention to offend anyone. We have a long-standing tradition of inviting people to play drums, and it seemed from the stage that the initial response from the crowd indicated they were okay with tonight's audience participation member coming on stage with us, and then they went on to give, like, a huge apology. Yeah, you don't bring up the Russian drummer at that gig. It just, yeah, it's just like the backlash is crazy. That was ugly. It's even worse when you watch it. He looks like he knows he's digging the hole as he goes in deeper and deeper. Google it and watch it. It, it. it is so sad. And, you know, and I love that band, too. So, so let's I. see what happens. Let's see what happens after the apology. I don't know if you saw the story, but uh, Catherine McPhee and David Foster's nanny. Oh, it's awful. Fatally run over by an elderly woman at a car dealership. Yes, she accidentally drove into a customer reception area at a car dealership. Their nanny, Yadira Kalido, fatally struck at the dealership. Um, now, while Kalido was waiting for her car to be serviced, this woman who's 84 drove her Toyota RAV into the covered service bay driveway, mistakenly, of course, hitting the accelerator oh. instead of the brakes. I know. Uh, the nanny was taken to the hospital and then later pronounced dead. This happens so much. It happened early on a lot with Tesla, where people, because you don't hear anything, yes. it's completely silent in the early, you know, early cars. Now there's some noise. But people would get out and forget to put it into park. And so the cars were going through that. storefront windows. The photos are, yeah, the photos are really sad and shocking. Now it holds when you hit the brake, whatever. Right. But, yeah, it's just awful. And you see it a lot with elderly people. Sad. Yeah, two others were also injured in the crash, expected to make a full recovery. I hate to hear that. The Game of Thrones actors, Darren Kent is dead at the age of 36, suffered from an extremely rare skin disorder. There's been a lot of other shows, too. Um, episode of Game of Thrones, uh, Les Miserables, uh, Malpractice, Blood Drive, he, Dungeons and Dragons. Really sad case. Uh, he acted in Mirrors along with Kiefer Sutherland. He was with uh, Chris Helmsworth and Snow White and the Huntsman. Hate to hear that. It was really kind of a rare, rare blood disease. Tom Morello from Rage Against the Machine performed for the striking writers and actors. Guess what song he sang? A old folk song. This land is your land. Guess what? Everyone sang along. It's Tom Morello. Are they going to add that to their set list? Way to go, Tom Morello. <laughs> yeah, that's just... Okay. Barnes, I don't agree with this. This is a stretch, but uh, social media calling for Sandra Bullock to return the Oscar she won for The Blind Side because of all that controversy we've talked about between Michael Orr and the Tui family. 
You know, the Tui family says Michael Orr tried to shake them down for $15 million, saying he'd go public if they didn't pay up. They also say they hope to reconcile with Michael, but will not hesitate to defend themselves. You know, he is claiming that he was never really adopted, right? It was a conservatorship, and he didn't make any of the money that they made off of him. Why bring in Sandra Bullock? Because it was a movie. They're saying he's just trying to sell books, but you want to hear some weird pop culture? That Oscar yeah. has been in my hands. That what? That specific Oscar. Go to my Ooh. Instagram. I pinned the picture at the top of my Instagram, Barnesology. That night, I was at the Academy Awards, left, got in an elevator with Sandra Bullock. And at the time, who was it she, the scandal came out about, it was Jesse James Dupree? That was her husband at the time? The tattooed guy. What was his name? I'm pretty sure it was Jesse James Dupree. Because that story broke two days later about him cheating or something. Yes, I remember that. Anyway, we get in the elevator. It's him and her, me and my friend Julie. And I look over at her and I said, wow, that's that's impressive. Can I hold it? She had just won it for Blindside. And she said, she looked at me and she started laughing. She goes, well, I guess we're in an elevator, so you can't run too far. And handed it to me. And I quickly, you know, just snapped the picture. But those are heavy, heavy, heavy. heavy. But yeah, it's... Barnes, it, uh, huh? quick correction. Who was it? Jesse James Dupree is our friend that was in Jackal. Oh, that's... Who was the guy I'm thinking about? <laughs> just Jesse James, but... Oh, Jesse sorry, James. Sorry, Jesse James. No Dupree. Yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. Jesse James. I knew it was Jesse James. I don't know why I pulled in Dupree. Yeah, that's okay. We love Jesse James Dupree, though, so... Oh, do I have a show... For Barnes. Oh, come to me, because I'm running out. Oh, somebody should have thought about this a long time ago. A collection of reality TV's biggest jerks Ooh. will face off in a new show called House of Villains, premiering on E! October 6th. Why didn't anybody think about this before? They're going to try to out-manipulate each other to win $200,000, right? Guess who's hosting? Joel McHale. That might be <laughs> too much villain. You know what I mean? America's ultimate supervillain. That's a lot of villain. Uh, contestants including Johnny Fairplay from Survivor. Oh, God. They're going back far. Wait. Tiffany New York Pollard from Flava of Love. Okay. This is bottom of the barrel. Wait, here's another one. This one goes way back from The Apprentice. Amorosa. Oh, she's on everything. Yeah. Forget it. <laughs> You're not hitting me with any good villains right now. These are all majorly outdated villains. Well, there you go. America's ultimate supervillain. Boy, is this becoming a trend? Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis are offering a one-night stay at their beach house in Santa Barbara on Airbnb. Oh. They even promised to, quote, be there to greet you upon arrival. How did I forget to tell you? I got in on the, remember the, the rent or get Gwyneth Paltrow's guest house for the night? Wait a second. I got in. Did you in. actually bid? You bid on that? It's not a bid. You get in, and then <gasps> they had a limited space available. I got in, and then you have to tell them why. Like, you have to tell them why you should be able to get it because it's going to be cheap. So I came up with some, you know, stack of BS. We'll see if I get it. But then they're going to... Gwyneth is going to let me know if I'm able to rent her guest house in, I think it's Montecito. Yeah, Montecito is gorgeous. But this one, yeah, this is... Airbnb's paying these people a lot of money. I'm going to crack up if you get in. I was loading I was loading the page over and over and over and over and over, and it showed no availability immediately. And then I just kept bah, 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 rapid fire, refresh. And then all of a sudden, September 9th opened as check-in, September 10th check-out. And I, I was shaking so hard, I clicked it really fast and got my reservation request I mean, in. If people ever question your dedication to the morning act. Dude, if I get that, come on. Oh. You're going to have some fun. That is your Celebrity Sleaze. Good morning. Next with Barnes and Leslie. 99X.